Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. It's finally here. This is the metadata and timecode burn-in effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, people have been asking for this for quite a while, and it's been in beta development for quite a while, but it's finally here. The feature gives us the ability to have a burn in in like this, so we can burn in time code and many other things. I've got lots of ways uh, to apply it and show it here, so let's go have a look. So in the effects, if you just start typing metadata, there it is, metadata and time code burn in and you can drag it to a clip. So I'll drag it to this clip and we'll see in this example, it's source time code. So as it plays, we see source time code. Now, if I want this in every single one of these clips, it makes no sense to keep dragging it in. So instead of putting it here, I'm going to use transparent video. So if you're in your project panel and this little new item, you click and use transparent video. It's going to make, this is kind of like an adjustment layer, but I think, and it works with adjustment layers, but I think it's more appropriate with transparent video. Here's what's important. The width and height are based on the project you're working on. So if you have a 4K project, it will make it 4K. You can't change it after the fact. The positioning and the, the size of these really is dependent on the clip or on the timeline setting. So um, I would use a specific one for settings. So make an HD um, version, make an, a, a, a 4K version. So let me drag the metadata effect onto transparent video. So now you can see it shows up in every one of the, uh, the clips. So if we look at the effect, in my effects control panel, we get size. So you can make the size much bigger. It defaults to 15%. The opacity is the background. So you can never change the opacity of the, uh, the type. It's always at 100% white. We'll look at, the, at what metadata we can show, but let me just go over these. So the position, if you click back up here, it's kind of odd. Uh, no, it, it does. If you click here in any of these, you'll see a little target. So you can drag this anywhere on the screen. Or you can use the numbers and type that in. Then there's an, an independent size because you'll notice that you have five of these. So you have a, a global size and then an independent size for each one you can choose what the metadata is showing for. Right now I've got three video, three audio tracks, and it will, if you, more if you have them. Or it can do the top clip. The top clip is whichever one is on top hiding the rest. And, and that can be different, so you can have it staggered throughout. You can uh, have a field symbol showing or not. This is if you're using interlaced, what's the format, um, what is the, the uh, source frame rate, and if there's an offset. So sometimes you might want to offset that. Okay, so that's all for source time code. Look at all the things you can show. Clip time code, generate time code, so new time code, sequence time code, sound time code. Some people are shooting on set where the sound device is actually recording the uh, primary time code and everything else is reading from that, so you can show that. What is the camera roll, client information, clip duration, comment, daily roll, description, file name, frame rate, whether something is good or not good, the lab roll, log note, project clip name, sequence clip name, sequence duration, scene shot, sound roll, tape name, video codec, and video resolution. Whew. So you can have five of these. Let me show you an example where I've got them set up. So in this example, as I let it roll, you can see at the top is clip time code, sequence duration on the top right, sequence time code bottom right, and the frames per second, and the project clip, which, what is the name of it? So when this moves to the next clip, we'll see a different name show up. There it is. 
food at pass. And if we go along, each one of these are showing up. And I've done this again on a transparent video track, which you can turn on and off. It's a burn in because if we go to the export mode, we can see it's burned in for all of that. So you can use this just for your reference while you're editing. And if you've got it on something like a transparent video track, you can turn it off globally, export cleanly without it, or you can add it, um, have it burned in when you're exporting out your video. All right, let's look at another example I have, which is what codec. So this one is set to show me the video codec that I'm using. So even though this is on another track, it's going to show me the information on the track below it. So there's Apple ProRes on that one. This one was recorded with my uh, Samsung AVC, AVC1. Uh, this is a uh, DNX HD. DVN, this was a, if we zoom in on the name of this, uh, yeah, this was a DVC Pro clip and another one from uh, another Samsung phone. And then this was shot originally with uh, my Blackmagic camera. Now, you can save this effect in here. So let's go back to that professional example and this is all of that data here. Just like any effect in the effects controls, we can save this as a preset and uh, I'll call this burn in one. Click OK. Now when I come in here and delete this, go back to my effects, I'll look for burn in, there it is, drag it onto here and I've got the burn in. So like I said, just be careful of the size. Here is a, uh, a dancer and this is a 4096 by 2400 clip. If we go back to my effect and I choose that same burn in made for HD, look at the way it shows up. And that's because it's scaling to fit the frame, but the individual sizes of each one of these is now uh, the same as the original. And if you try to go in and go to size, you can change the size here and make them bigger. So this is the global size. So you could tweak it that way, but quite honestly, I would save, a, an, I would make another burn in for this 4K clip. Actually, it's larger than 4K. Uh, and then I would save it and I would label it. So that these, instead of saying just burn in one, this one would be burn in HD. So I now know, don't apply that to um, the 4K clip. Now let's go back to the fashion one here. And I want to change this to description and you'll see that it will disappear. There's no description in any of these clips. That's because description has to be added by someone in metadata. So I'll go to my uh, window menu and look at metadata and it's going to show up over here. Uh, this is, you can dock this or float this like any panel and I'll choose, I'll search for description. There's the description field. I'll click in there and I'll do it for this clip here. So I'm not going to do this for the uh, transparent video with the effect. I'm doing it on a clip basis. And uh, I'll just call this two models, uh, orange and blue. And there they are. And the size of that is quite large. And if I move off of it, the clips before and after don't show that. So some of these will only show up 
if it makes sense for something to be um, with metadata that's on the clip, like whether something is good or not, and you see it shows up with uh, unknown information. So if we go back to the metadata and we look for good, so that metadata is showing for this clip, and I'll turn this on, and it needs to refresh. And if I turn this off now, it's going to show as not good. So you can pick which ones are good. And now when I go over those, that's showing as good. Because these aren't not good because this needs to be set on and then set off and then it's set as not good. So <clears throat> the, the metadata hasn't been applied. It's not as if every clip has a, is it good or is it not? The good or not good metadata is not on a clip uh, by default until you either apply it and then unapply it, making it not good, uh, then it will show up. But just, I wanted to show you how some of these um, metadata fields <laughs> won't show up on a clip, but some obviously will, like if we go back to some of the, the, uh, the defaults that were in here, like clip time code, they all get clip time code because that's something that they inherently have. And again, let's go back to that diner example. This is just such a great example. This is very typical of the kinds of things that uh, a professional source would have. Oh yeah, one last thing I wanna show you. Even though you get five of these, you can add another version of it. So I could add another, and now I've got more. So it's five per instance of the effect, but there's no limit. You could just keep adding the metadata effect in there. I mean, eventually it gets to be too much information, but you could store tons of metadata burn-in uh, uh, information in that burn-in for each one of the clips. It's up to you. So you can do it on a clip, you can do it on an adjustment layer, on a transparent video. Keep that scaling stuff in mind, but this is something that people have asked for for at least a few years now. Uh, I actually had this in my tutorial list at least last year, maybe even the, the year before. That's how long they've been working on this effect. And it's finally here and you can use it for something like descriptions or something very detailed like time code and stuff like that. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? You can do that on our website at videoreveal.com slash shop, where you can donate once or monthly any amount, like our wonderful, amazing donors. Thank you so much. Uh, and thanks, Ben. Boy, oh boy, you've been around and, and uh, supporting us for a long, long time. We really do appreciate it. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to sit here and wait forever until a, a, a feature finally comes out that you can use, and I let you know all about it.